I have just a few minutes here before I need to head out to Ephrata to meet with the guy uh, about grafting his Chinese medicinal herbs. That's what they're called. Um, somebody said you didn't know about grafting weed, you thought you had to clone it. Well, I said it wasn't weed. It's. Uh, I asked him if it was. <laughs> he said everybody asked that, but no, it's, it's some other uh, medicinal plants. And I've never grafted anything like that, but it could be kind of fun. Anyway, I'm going to go see that guy. And um, i got a couple minutes here, and so I wanted to answer some comments. A couple really good comments. Here's a question. It says, how do you even count that many trees? That was yesterday's job. Uh, do you carry a hand clicker? Yeah, we have those little tally counters that you click with your thumb. And uh, on that job, I carried two of them. And I counted the, one, the trees with one graft on one counter and the trees with two graphs on the other counter so I could keep it straight and uh, sometimes you can count three rows on either side of you but this guy screwed up the planning so bad that nothing's lined up out there it should be perfectly lined up uh, three different directions any direction you look at those trees it should be lined or not so he messed that up so I can only count three rows at a time it was just get too confusing and you get lost and lose count and uh, any time that I think that I've counted a tree twice or whatever I'll skip a couple because if I error I want to error in favor of the grower that's just how I've done it for all these years if he goes out there and counts his trees I want him I want him to know that I did not take advantage of it uh, but it just kind of irked me that that guy <laughs> was out there spending money to count trees because you didn't trust me. You know why he didn't trust me? Because he's not to be trusted. See, we accuse others of what we do. I learned that a long time ago. So that's why he doesn't trust me. Because he would be willing to screw me over. <laughs> so he thinks that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> okay, here was a comment that just makes these videos all worthwhile. The time that I put into them. Sometimes it's late when I get in and out of the field and I'm tired and and as you notice, I don't really do any editing on these videos. It's pretty much raw footage other than maybe switching between the GoPro and, and my other camera. Uh, I just don't have the time or the energy to do a lot of editing. So, you know, and there's, I probably should do more because, you know, I was grappling about that manager out there. And after I posted the video, I go, oh, Ken, you know, I shouldn't have done that. That wasn't very professional. I should have just kept my mouth shut. You know, but it's real. This is real. People irritate you sometimes. What can you say, you know? So, uh, anyway, I'm not mad at the guy, you know. It's just, uh, he's just one of those guys that I don't really, you know, um, have to deal with again. Um, in life, we need to uh, pay attention to who we invite to sit at our table, you know. And, uh, and so I don't want him sitting at my table. <laughs> Anyway, you guys know I have, the, the long-time subscribers here know I have a sense of humor. And most of the time, I'm just making jokes anyway. But uh, that's enough about that. Uh, but there was a guy here commented, uh, Drolad, Droladnap? I don't know what that means. That's his screen name or his, his uh, uh, YouTube name, D-R-O-L-A-D-N-A-P says uh after yesterday's video he says another great video i've been watching your videos for a couple of years and thanks to you i now have a fruit tree that grows ruby red grapefruit meyer lemons awari satsumas and valencia oranges i learned it all from you so keep up the great work thank you man that just makes my day that somebody was able to take some information from these videos and apply it in your own backyard and have some success that's uh that makes it all worthwhile for me so uh, i appreciate you watching these videos and i'm so glad uh you know you know more about grafting citrus than i do i uh i have a friend in california that's grafted citrus a little bit but uh, i thought it had to be uh, budded rather than stick grafted or sign grafted but uh, sounds like you've had uh, good success with it if you're going to graft grapes man side graft them um, I mean, that's my recommendation. They do so well. I've, I've grafted thousands of acres in California and thousands of acres. And we always use that side graft when we can. We've chip budded grape rootstock. 
you have to chip by that, but uh, side graft them if they're an inch in diameter or so. Okay, here's a question. Uh, this is an excellent question, but it's loaded, man. There's just all kinds of things to address here. So thank you for sharing your trade. What can you tell us with regard to rootstocks, inner stems, and compatibility? As in fruit cocktail trees, specifically sour cherry like Montmorency, what could be successfully grafted onto it? Would like to graft plum and apricots. Internet info says, says yes. Some say no. What is your advice, Jonathan? Jonathan Shepard, thank you for the question. Um, let's try and break it down. What can you share? Um, what can you tell us with regard to rootstocks, inner stems, and compatibility? Okay, rootstocks usually are disease resistant rootstocks or dwarfing rootstocks and they're variable you know uh, the sizes vary you can get rootstocks that will vary the size of the tree a full tree three-quarter tree half tree and uh, some of them have very dwarfing rootstocks back in the old days they picked fruit these apple trees off a uh, 16 18 foot ladders well OSHA doesn't like that and if you had trees that big nowadays you'd never get pickers because they'd all go to the other ranches where it's, you know, they can pick off a 10 or 12 foot ladder. Oh, where was I? Talking about gray, or, uh, rootstock and uh, dwarfing trees, uh, part of the reason for using a dwarfing rootstock is because the orchards nowadays are planted in such high density. They're so close together that they want to keep the trees small and uh, sometimes they'll put thousand trees the acre and all that tree has to produce is one box of apples whereas in the old days they planted them on a sometimes a 40 by 40 spacing and that tree had to produce a lot of fruit but these high density plantings now that's that's the way they do it they've just learned better ways so that's the reason for using the dwarfing rootstock plus it's disease resistant in some cases now um, Interstem, interstem, all these orchards are, when we graft them, we're actually uh, grafting onto an interstem. These uh, orchards are all grafted in the nursery. The nurseries grow rootstock, but the rootstock itself does not produce fruit, or at least not good fruit. So they always put the variety on the rootstock, uh, red delicious, or well, not so much reds anymore, some, but but the new apples, the Cosmic Crisp or the Honey Crisp and um, Donna Gold and, and on and on. There's hundreds of varieties. But so when that tree grows in and grows that type of fruit and then we come along and change that, the piece between the rootstock and the one we're grafting onto, onto it, that's called an inner stem. Now inner stems can be used to dwarf trees also. Uh, one time years ago I had to go in and do some what's called bridge grafting and I grafted into the root system on these pear trees over the inner stem and back into the tree to get more nutrients flowing into the tree because in the nursery they had grafted in a section of old home pear upside down to slow the tree down and try to get a dwarf, more dwarf tree. Well, it dwarfed it too much. There was not enough nutrients flowing through that that inner stem, so we grafted over that. We bridged over that inner stem to put more energy into the tree, and it worked out well. Another time, now, uh, Jonathan, you mentioned the Montmorency cherry. Montmorency, Montmorency, excuse me, is a pie cherry, and you call it sour cherry. It's sour cherry, and these uh, these. Uh, trees that we grow or cherries we grow here for the fresh market lappins, sweethearts, skeenas, on and on are sweet cherries and the sour cherries or, or the pie cherries uh, that's a different thing now I have grafted pie cherry onto another variety of cherries so I don't think there's any issues with compatibility I think if you had Montmorency pie cherry, you could graft on a Lapin or a Bean or some other variety of cherry, and I don't think you would have any issues. Now, not everything works that way, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Stone fruit is different, different animal. doesn't work that way. But with cherries, I think you're safe to graft either way. 
pie cherry onto a sweet cherry or sweet cherry onto a sour cherry. I think you'd be okay. Um, okay, you want to talk about uh, a fruit cocktail tree, and uh, and that's that's what they call them, or a fruit salad tree, where you graft on several varieties onto one tree. And uh, okay, sour cherry. Uh, what can successfully graft it onto it? Well, I talked about that. Any kind of sweet cherry you want, probably. Um, but you said, I'd like to graft plums and apricots. Okay, you cannot graft plum or apricot or stone fruit onto a cherry. you got to stay in the same family, uh, in the same species, like pears on pears, apples on apples, cherries on cherries. But now, when we get into stone fruit, you can get a little tricky with that and it's pretty pretty neat pretty fun and I've done some of this um, you can graft you can take a peach understock plant a peach tree I don't care what variety anything you want um, J.H. Hale, Red Haven, whatever plant a peach tree okay onto that peach tree you can graft an apricot you can graft a nectarine you can graft a plum and you can graft other peaches if it's a young peach tree say a couple years old so that you have your primary scaffolds three or four that you can graft onto and you can put a different variety on each limb and uh, you have a fruit salad tree now as stone fruit gets older it gets tougher to graft it's kind of like cherries old cherry trees do not graft well Peaches get really tough. When they get over about 10, 12, 15 years old, they're hard to graft. Even to put a peach on a peach gets tough when they get older. Now, you would think they'd be totally compatible, uh, but, but they start to get tough as they get older. So you can put, as I mentioned, nectarine, apricot, plums, all on a peach, but you can't put peach on plum. And I had a grower call me one time, had been farming stone fruit his whole life, and he wanted me to graft peaches onto nectarines. And I said, I'm sorry, you can't go that direction. You can go the other way. You can put all those things on peach, but you can't put peach on plum, can't put peach on apricot or nectarine. And I don't know why they're that way other than that's just how God made them. So, uh, but, but I'm glad that I knew that because uh, it would have been bad if I didn't and went in and did all this grafting and then he would have had a disaster on his hands. I would have felt responsible, uh, but thankfully I, I knew that and I know a lot of little tricks like that and that's why Rogelio is not going to go out and start his own grafting business <laughs> anytime soon. But um, I hope that uh, that answers your questions, Jonathan. And uh, you'll have no problem grafting plums and apricots onto your peach tree. Uh, just, just as long as they're young. Get them, if you got a peach tree that's five, six years old or three or four years old, that's, that's perfect. And they will, they will do well. Now, sinewood, uh, stone fruit, sinewood, is, that's tricky. Uh, as peaches grow and nectarines grow, you'll see uh, kind of a... Uh, red or green wood out on the tips of the shoots, you don't use that. You want to get down close to where you snip that sucker shoot off of the main limb and you may only get one sign out of each sucker. But use that brown wood that, that's hardened off and, uh, and fully dormant, collect it in January or in the winter time and get it in the cold storage until spring when you want to do your grafting. But uh, don't use red or green wood. It won't grow. You've got to get down and get that uh, brown, uh, mature, hardened off wood. And it's kind of hard to come by because the way peaches grow, as you know, they'll, they'll grow a little section, 10, 12 inches, and they'll throw out all these little side shoots. Then you get another section of growth. Well, you've got to get behind those side shoots and get that brown wood, and that'll help you out a lot. Don't use the green stuff or the red stuff. And I uh, hope that helps you, Jonathan. And if I didn't understand part of your question, or, you know, there was a whole lot <laughs> in that question, in that paragraph. You asked uh, about a lot of things, and I could probably go on more about it, but I won't. 
anyway, hopefully I answered enough specifically that uh, to get to what you, you wanted to know. If not, man, just shoot me another question and I'll try to narrow it down. So, um, thanks guys for watching. Um, I'd like to get this channel to a thousand subscribers. I don't know if that'll happen, um, but... But there's people coming on board almost every day somebody subscribes. And I don't know if those are people that watch my other videos or just people that have run across this channel. I wanted to name it the channel Grafting 101, but there were some other videos already called that. So I just called it All About Grafting. And we'll see how it goes. But I'd like to get to a thousand subscribers. That would that'd be kind of fun. Um, anyway... Um, if you did come over from my other channel, uh, thank you for that. And if you're a newcomer here, uh, feel free to ask questions and I'll try to get you caught up. And at the end of my grafting season, when I get more time, or if we get rained out or have a day off, I'll go back into the archives and I'd like to do a series of videos that, where I get down and deal with the technique and show how to execute it and explain the cambium layer show where it's at on different things where it's at on apples is different than where it is on grapes well not where it's located but uh, it just looks different it, it has a different appearance and sometimes it's a wide band and sometimes it's a really narrow one so you gotta know where that cambium layer is and I want to get into that and then I want to do a uh, I can do a series of videos or long video on uh, building grafting knives and how we do that and how to sharpen them and there's uh, quite a lot to know about uh, setting up the, the, the bevels and the final edge and, and, and how we work that edge to our advantage to make the knife come through the wood in the center. That's a whole other another series and I could do several videos on collecting sign wood of different varieties and that's really what I wanted to do when I started this channel uh, but I didn't get started soon enough to do that. I started it on the first day of grafting season and I'm busy. So I don't have the time to spend on each one of these individual things. But I will. I'll get to it. In the meantime, uh, thanks for coming along and hopefully you can glean something, some information here and there. And uh, part of it's just fun to watch old guys like me and Victor get out there and work, you know. And one guy, he couldn't, he just, young man, you know, but he couldn't couldn't handle it. It was just too rough for him. And uh, Victor had another guy. He puts an ad on Facebook, and, and we usually get our people that way because I've never got anybody that's worth a hoot from the employment office. They don't want to work. They want to draw unemployment. And uh, he, he called down there and said, I need three people to go to Chelan. And, well, that's too far. They don't want to go. And, well, I need some people to paint trees. Well, they don't want to paint trees. And so... No, we'll just go ahead and give them a check, and you know, it's just, it's ridiculous, but, so anyway, uh, another guy called Victor about the job, and, and that was yesterday morning, and we'd had some rain, and Victor told him what he's going to be doing out in the orchard painting trees, and, well, the grass is wet, I don't want to go out there, because the grass is wet, oh, <laughs> all right, see ya.